The second pillar of digital photography is aperture. It is the size of the opening in every lens, which determines the amount of light entering the camera. Let's take a look at aperture in details. Aperture is measured in f numbers and is also called the f stop. The smaller the f number, the bigger would be the opening and the bigger the f number, the smaller would be the opening. Here on the slide, you can see a range of f numbers from f1.8 to f22. There are lenses that can go below f1.8 and higher than f22, but for sake of simplicity, let's talk about this range. Every lens that you buy comes with specifications which tells you the minimum and the maximum aperture. The minimum value is more important as it tells you the speed of the lens. For example, a lens with minimum aperture at 1.8 will be faster than a lens with minimum aperture 5.6. This is because a f1.8 lens can take in more light and hence you can use a faster shutter speed to capture the same frame at same exposure. Here is an example. The photo on the right is taken using a 50mm 1.8D lens and the left one with a 1855mm f3.5 f5.6 lens. Both are clicked at the minimum aperture allowed by the lens at 50mm. The difference can be observed in the choosing shutter speed to get the same exposure. With the left one clicked at 1 5th of a second and the right one at 1 40th of a second. This tells us the speed of the lens. For this particular subject in light, the f1.8 lens is 8 times faster than the f3.5 f5.6 lens. Aperture plays a vital role in defining the focus of an image and the light as well. That's why fixed aperture lenses or prime lenses are much costlier than the lenses with variable aperture. This is because a variable aperture is easier to construct than a fixed aperture. Also, as discussed in a previous section about lens types, prime lenses have a lot of uses and are constantly used by professionals in almost all fields of photography. We highly recommend you to have a prime lens in your kit. Now, since we know what aperture is and what shutter speed is, let's see how they are related. In this example, we are going to change aperture in aperture priority mode in both Canon and Nikon. You will see that aperture and shutter speed are inversely proportional. The bigger is the opening of the lens, the faster can be the shutter speed. Or in other words, the smaller the f number, the bigger would be the opening, the more light the camera would be able to take in and hence we can use a faster shutter speed. Here again, we have repeated the same demo with a Nikon camera and similar effect can be seen here. With aperture, there is another term which is very important in the field of photography called the depth of field. Depth of field basically determines the depth in an image where the subject will be in the center and the area in front and in the back of that subject that is in focus. Everything else in the scene will be out of focus. The farther you go from the primary focused object, the more out of focus it will become. This actually gives depth to an image and make it look more lifelike than just a flat 2D plane. The aperture number decides the size of the area which will be in focus and how much out of focus will be the object farthest from the primary focus subject. As discussed earlier, we know that smaller the aperture, the bigger is the opening and with that we get something called a shallow depth of field. For example, if we are trying to take photo of three people standing behind one another, we can adjust the aperture till all of the three are in focus. It could be achieved using a small aperture value of f2.8 or f4. This would mean that only a small area or depth in front and in back of the subject will be in focus and far objects like the tree will be out of focus. Now, if you want to make that tree also to be included in the focus area, 
you can use bigger f numbers or smaller openings. In this case, the depth of the focused area would be larger. This is called deep depth of field. This happens for f numbers like f11, f15, f22 or larger numbers. Let's look at examples to understand depth of field. Here you can see that the object in the background is completely out of focus. But with increasing f numbers, it is gradually coming to focus more and more and at f22 it is almost in focus. See how the depth of field is changing. Now, if you are wondering where to use high f numbers and where to use low f numbers, the answer is very simple. Smaller aperture values like f1.8, f2.8 etc are great with low light and produce great blurry backgrounds. Hence, they are good for portraits, weddings, products, food and similar types of photography. On the other hand, a high f number like f22 or f36 should be used with really good light. These will produce very clear photos with everything in them very sharp. These should be used for nature, landscape, aerial, events and similar types of photography. For any questions on this, please use the ask a question button to send your query. Let's now move on to the next chapter, ISO.